Hi, I'm David Greenfield and I teach comics and graphic novels. But if you look at the name of the program below, Global Comics and Learning, you might get a hint that what I teach is a lot more than just comics and graphic novels. I teach students and their teachers about the history and the formal elements of um, graphic narrative, of uh, sequential stories, AKA comics and graphic novels. Um, I work with uh, teachers and students around the world. At this point, I'm working with uh, teachers and students in 16 countries, including Europe, the Middle East, Africa, uh, East Asia, and South Asia. It's really fun. It's really interesting. And I can say that we, meaning me and the teachers and students, all learn a lot. Um, I'm not really interested in the kinds of stories that people oftentimes associate with comics and graphic novels. That is, talking animals and superheroes. That's, that's not what I do. In fact, the name of my doctoral dissertation was Beyond Superheroes and Talking Animals, Teaching Students About Social Education with Comics. And yes, I am a doctor. I have my doctorate in education, and that's what I wrote about. I'm really interested in ways that we can really reach out to all kinds of students and all kinds of learning levels and all kinds of learning styles. And no matter what the theorists say, when you're in a classroom, you see different students do learn different ways. And there are ways that we can reach out and bring everybody into the learning discussion. I started doing this, well, this program is been going on about two and a half years, but my interest in teaching graphic novels, um, the nonfiction and the historical fiction started about 15 years ago, although I've been reading comics since I was a kid. Um, one of the benefits of comics is uh, the benefit of uh, literacy. Um, it, comics really helped me learn to read. Not that I had any problems, it's just that I wanted to read comics uh, more than just about anything, except for the World Book Encyclopedia. I really loved the World Book Encyclopedia back then. So I started teaching this on the invitation of a friend of mine from the KidLink organization who wanted me to work with her um, in her class in Russia and speak about art, because I'm also an artist for about four decades. And one thing led to the next, and I started to teach this class. So the class is taught um, as a group. So there's usually never only one school participating in each presentation. I will teach uh, classes. For example, a recent class I taught um, in Nigeria, in Lagos, Nigeria, had students from Rwanda, Kenya, and South, uh, South Sudan. It's a great way for me to learn about these students and it's a great way for these students to learn about each other and also about an American that's not in the television or politics. I just want to find out and celebrate them. And so far, um, the response has been really, really positive. The kids like it, the teachers like it, teachers are telling other teachers or are contacting me and asking me if I'll teach and I always say yes. Um, by the way, I do not charge for these classes. I don't believe in this kind of uh, endeavor as a money-making endeavor because I know that not every school has a budget for external um, classes or enrichment. So I want to provide my knowledge and experience to people that could use it. Some can afford it, others can't, but this way it flattens uh, the playing field so that everybody has an opportunity. Um, I also teach these classes, um, teaching the students how to use um, analog tools. What do I mean by analog? Pencils, pens, paper, whatever they've got. We use the digital to communicate with each other, but I want the students to learn how to draw for all kinds of reasons. There's a cognitive be benefit of what you see and what you draw creates all kinds of openings 
in the thought process. Um, it it uh, allows students to work when there's no electricity or there's no power. Um, and if they don't have the newest tools for being able to create online comics, again, I'm trying to level out the, the playing fields so people can learn together. Um, we work on a lot of different projects and the projects are always based on something real in their lives. Um, create a, uh, a two page comic about what you do in the morning, how you get started, how you get, what do you eat? How do you get to school? Um, now we're working on uh, projects that um, address celebrations and most importantly, the meals and food that are used in these celebrations. So we can see that, um, I mean, the truth is we always learn best in the kitchen when we're learning about another culture. I grew up in a town that had a, a pretty diverse population and I learned all about different communities by hanging out in the kitchens with my friends and their mothers. As the mothers cooked, they told stories. It's a great way to learn. So if we create comics, we can learn about what we eat and how we share stories and recipes with each other. And there's a lot more. I'm also working with um, other subgenres of graphic novels, including graphic journalism and graphic medicine. And I'll talk to you more about that in the future. Um, what I'm asking is for your, you all to subscribe to this channel. This will allow me to continue to uh, work with these different st students and different teachers around the world and provide my, my enjoyment and my passion to all of these different students. As I move on, the people uh, the, will get access to um, uh, what I say, what, uh, the classes that I teach, to uh, blogs about comments or things that I've learned, um, there'll be blogs about education. Um, there'll be blogs about comics. There'll be um, blogs about the students. There'll be blogs about the topics. I mean, there's a lot for me to talk about. And if you were to ask my friends about me, or well, everybody said that I should just tell stories. I'm pretty good at that. Um, by the way, I do have a background in fine art. I painted and photographed for about 40 years and there'll be issues related to art that come up and related to the kind of visual creativity. I teach in a manner that whether students know how to draw or not, everybody can participate. I make the classes so everybody can participate. And also, so the students have more talent in one area can help the students who have less talent in that area. They can collaborate, not even not only within their school, but also in, uh, in other schools and other countries. So um, please sign up, please subscribe. Um, you'll learn about the program. You will help students learn about each other, maybe reducing some of the hate on this planet a little bit, but you know, never know what those seeds will uh, blossom into. So again, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the funny papers.